Hi guys and welcome back to Grow Photography. Today we're going to be talking about the Hasselblad 500cm. Okay, so here, this is my Hasselblad. I, uh, this is it in its, in its raw form. It was originally developed in the 70s. It's a film, it was a film camera. Uh, this comes with a standard 80 millimeter lens. It has a standard film back, A12 back for 12 exposures of medium format 120 film. It shoots in, uh, in square format. So the, if you look through the viewfinder here, and I love the waist level finder, which is this here. There's a split prism focusing screen on the inside of this for full manual focus. It doesn't even use a battery. It's a completely manual uh, camera. Now, you can get yourself a prism finder on this, which replaces this waist level finder, and that has a built-in meter, which is battery operated. But this particular setup here, which is basically the Hasselblad in its raw form, has no electronics in it at all. It's a completely manual camera. Of course, until you get a digital back for it, and I do have a digital back. It's, this is an older back. It's a Phase 1 P25. It's a 22 megapixel back and uh, it was designed by phase one to fit directly onto this without an adapter. So you can still get these on eBay. They're hard to find, but if you can find one, there's still a very, very good uh, medium format digital sensor for your camera, for this particular camera. And they have made these to fit other types of medium format cameras, but today we'll just talk about the Hasselblad. Uh, what I love about this camera is it's actually pretty portable. I carry this around and do street photography with this. You can get a strap on this. Carry that around with you on the street. Okay, it has a magnifier, so fl flipping this up gives you a magnifier to be able to get critical focus. Okay, your shutter button is right there. This is your crank. That's your crank for your film. This is your shutter shutter crank to forward your shutter. Cock your shutter. That goes back down. I'm just gonna take this off again. So you can see in, it's a medium format camera. It shoots a large piece of film, but it still is fairly light and portable compared to something like the, you know, Mamiya RB67. I own a Mamiya RB67 too. I don't have it here with me, but it's probably about four times the size of this and a lot heavier. Um, and that would be a perfect camera to have strictly on a tripod, but not so much to carry around. This can be carried around. Um, the, again, one of the advantages of, of the Hasselblad, because it was such a popular camera, they were developed, um, digital sensors were developed, uh, like the Phase 1 P25, this one here, to fit directly onto this camera without an adapter. So I'm gonna show you how that works now. We just, again, press that lever. The film back comes off. That's the cover for the digital back. Just gonna release that. There's, look at the size of that sensor. That flips on just like that, and we lock that down. So that's ready to go now. The one thing that hasn't I haven't done yet is actually connect. So just before I even talk about that, I'll, I'll show you how it, come, it uses a card, a CF card. So you can store your images directly onto a, a CF card, compact flash card, okay? Or it has a FireWire connection. So you can tether this to your Macintosh or PC and operate this back through Capture One Pro or C1 Pro. Uh, and Capture One Pro is made by Phase, same company that developed this back, so that if you own this back, the software is absolutely free. You would be able to download that from their website for free. So that's one of the big advantages of having this type of a back too, is that it uh, operates perfectly with Capture One, as do many other cameras, but uh, Capture One is the best, in my opinion, the best raw capture software. Uh, so for tethering, uh, using this back, definitely want to, if you're in the studio, you want to tether it with a FireWire cable into your Mac or PC, like I said, and then use Capture One Pro. But again, even without that, I can walk around freely on the street without a cable. Um, 
you'll see there's a battery compartment here. That's my battery for the back and I, that'll power it for quite a while. I have a lot of extra batteries here. You can see I have, I always carry with me about four batteries. So that is more than a day's worth of shooting with these four batteries. You can go all day long, if not longer, okay? So that's my back. Um, you can see it's powered on and working. Again, there's no connection between the back though and the camera like this because it's there. Uh, I can definitely focus and, and make an image, but it's just not gonna communicate with the back. So what you need is a simple cable like this. And I'm just gonna show you how this works here. So there's a sync port right in there on the, cam on the camera body. There's two sync ports. There's actually one right on the lens and one right there. So what I t typically do is I set up, I have a simple cable like this. I have it in my sync port here, one end. The other end goes into my camera back, the digital back right there. And it's that simple. And then what I typically do is I have some tape and I just tape that down. And now I've got communication with the back. So I'm gonna turn that on. And I made an exposure. So it's solid black. <laughs> so it did communicate, you can see it communicated with the camera. Uh, sorry, the camera communicated with the back. It's functioning perfectly now that I have that in place. And it's as simple as that to operate this back. It's very, very simple to set up and use. So I can quickly swap between film backs and digital backs. And in fact, I just basically unplug this one side of the cable and just put my film back on and I'm ready to go. Um, reason why it's solid black is the exposure is off. This is a total manual camera. I don't have a meter in here. I would have to have a handheld meter or if I have enough light, I know I don't have enough light here. Um, I'm basically going to just do some tests and figure out what my exposure is based on my experience. But uh, I'm not going to take you through that today. It's more about, I think I just want to show you how this works. So again, it's functioning perfectly. Lens comes off like that. Okay, lenses come off, they're interchangeable. I only have the 80 millimeter uh, 2.8 Zeiss, which is the standard lens that came with this. I do have a, a wonderful, this is like the original Hasselblad cap for this. It's beautiful. That's what it looks like. So it's actually a really sexy camera. It's a really nice looking camera. I get a lot of comments when I'm walking around on the street. Oh, is that a Hasselblad? And people start talking to me. It's, it's iconic, people recognize the the camera, like I said, uh, people, especially those who are somewhat into photography or have any experience making photographs, have probably heard about the Hasselblad. Um, I could go on all day talking about all the little intricacies of the camera, things you have to look out for. I had to get this calibrated properly when I got this digital back. Um, there's a lot of testing that goes into this when you do get a digital back because it really was not designed to be used with a digital back. So. Once I got that, I did take it in and get it CLA'd, get it inspected by a technician to get it perfectly calibrated so that my focus was right on the, on the, on the sensor plane. Okay, that's really important because you want to get critical focus even at, at uh, very large f-stop openings. So that's, that's the Hasselblad 500CM. I think, um, yeah, I mean, I could go on and on. I think I'm gonna show you some examples now of some of the images uh, some of the iconic images that got made with this camera, both by uh, many fashion photographers, which I, you know, I have a lot of a, a real passion for portrait photography, but a lot of portrait photographers were also fashion photographers. People like Richard Avedon, Helmut Newton. These are, uh, you know, Albert Watson. These are people who are uh, fantastic fine art photographers, but they also were very successful commercial photographers. Use this camera. Uh, and then uh, I'll show you uh, towards the end of this, this clip as well, maybe some of the photographs that I've made on the street and in the studio using this camera. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. I'm sure you're gonna have many questions. Shoot me your questions and I'll try to follow up uh, in the channel to, to you know, communicate answers and we can have a discussion about the Hasselblad. It's a great camera. If anyone is interested in, in purchasing one of these, I can definitely follow up and give you some advice in terms of what to look for and so on, because there's so many variations of the Hasselblad too. This is one, but there are so many, okay? So thanks again for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this and thumbs up. We will see you in the next video.